Hmm, new angle. Hello. So I thought I would do the stay at home book tag. Quarantine is kind of lifted-ish where I live, but a lot of the world is still not having a good time with this whole coronavirus. Hoo-ha. Let's do the stay at home book tag. Did I say that? I think I did. So the first prompt is laying in bed a book that you can or have read in a day and mine would have to be Nimona. This is written and illustrated by Noel Stevenson. This graphic novel holds a very special place in my heart. This was my first ever graphic novel and it was based on the recommendation of the hosts of the Oh Witch Please podcast. So at this point I was invested in the podcast and they recommended some graphic novels and some comics. So I was still pretty snobby about my book choices at this time. So I thought, okay, I'll check it out because I like these guys, but uh, I'm not convinced. And I picked this up on their recommendation and I loved it. I took it with me to the park and we had a picnic and I demolished the entire book in one sitting. This was amazing. It was so cute and so wholesome and so ridiculous and the art style is amazing. The next prompt is snacking a guilty pleasure book. I tend to get rid of most of my guilty pleasure books, like if I buy them and then I think, oh, that's a guilty pleasure. I know that I probably won't read it again, but the one guilty pleasure book that I have kept that is just amazing is The Green Rider by Kristen Britton. I only have the first book in the Green Rider series. I have read up to book six, I believe, but I borrowed books two to six from my local library and didn't return them in time and incurred a huge fee because I had six books that were overdue. And that was the last time I used a library. I really enjoyed this book, but it's so ridiculous. There, all the characters mouth things at each other, like whole sentences, like that's a thing that is real. Um, and they always roll their eyes at each other and it's it feels very childish and teenagery, but the adventure and the story and the plot is super fun. Um, and yeah, guilty pleasure. And the next prompt is Netflix, a series that I want to start. Now that would have to be The Witcher series by Andrzej Sapowski. Andrzej Sapowski. And that would have to be The Witcher series by Andrzej Sapowski. I have been playing Witcher 3 for about a year now, I think. And I think I'm maybe like 30% of the way in. I take long gaps between playing depending on what's going on in my life. And that was the first Witcher experience I ever had was playing this game. And I really love it. I really love the world and the monsters and Geralt. And I recently just watched the series on Netflix. Really loved it. Have quite a lot of problems with it, but loved it nonetheless. And so I'm really intrigued to uh, get into those books. Deep Clean, a book that's been on my to-be-read list for a long time. That would be Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. And you might be able to tell why it's been on my to-be-read list for a long time. When I drop it on the table, it makes this sound. <laughs> Everything jumped. <laughs> I'll not do that again. I'm scared of this book. Animal Crossing, a book that I bought because of the hype. I don't tend to buy books because of the hype, because I live in a cave. Um, as you can see, my book cave. <laughs> but one book I did buy because of all the, the, the news presence was Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. And I heard of this book because of the hype that it got from the Man Booker Prize. And it was the, the whole Margaret Atwood first pair to win the prize together. First black woman author to 
win the prize. So I thought, hey, that sounds interesting. I'm going to read it. I will be reading this for the Queer Blackathon that is hosted by Jesse from Bowties and Books, which is, at the time of recording, tomorrow. Productivity, a book that I learned from or had an impact on me. That would be this book, Quiet by Susan Cain. Now, this looks like I'm just holding up a blank piece of paper, but I swear it's a book. Anyway, so this is a book about introverts, and I am very solidly in the introverts camp. And this was a book that was, it was written by an introvert for introverts so that you can fly your introvert flag. And also a guidebook to be able to give to extroverts to know how to deal with introverts. Kane's writing made me feel very seen. All the scenarios she brings up, all the stories and situations and responses that she talked about in this book, I recognised in myself. So it was really nice to be able to see that these problems are not something that I'm dealing with alone and that like 50% of the world's population probably is also introverted. So it was super nice to read this book and to realise this aspect of my personality is not something to be ashamed of. FaceTime. I don't know what FaceTime is. I don't, I don't, I kind of do. It, is it like when you, is, it's just a video call, right? I don't know. A book you were gifted. That would have to be the first book I was ever gifted by my other half, which is a beautiful folio edition copy of Animal Crossing by George Orwell. And if I just slide it out of the case. Isn't it beautiful? So this, if you don't know about Folio Society, they are a book publisher who specialises in absolutely beautiful copies of amazing books. So they started out a long time ago and their company was based in book subscriptions. So I think you could subscribe to the company and then you got like one book a month or one book every couple of months or, or something like that. And now you can buy books from them singly, um, but they still have the backbone of their company is providing these subscription boxes and every book is beautifully uh, printed, beautifully bound, beautifully illustrated and everyone comes with a slipcase which matches the cover. Not every slipcover is plain like that one. This is my special edition copy of June and this is the slipcover. Like, it's insane how beautiful this is, but I will talk about this in the future. This copy of Animal Crossing is illustrated by Quentin Blake, who, if you don't know who that is, he illustrated all of Roald Dahl's children's books, and he's got a super distinctive style, which is like this, this really sketchy style, which works so well with the story. And this book holds a really special place in my heart because my other half gifted this to me for my Christmas, I think. I think it was our first Christmas together and we were still in those early awkward stages where we weren't quite sure of exactly what the other one liked. And then he just handed this gift to me. And I'd never heard of Folio Society at the time. And it was so beautiful. And it was a book I'd never read, I'd always wanted to read, and it made me cry. Self-care. What is one thing that I've done during quarantine to look after myself? I got myself a desk, which is, as you can see, we're now in this new angle and I have my own desk, I have my own space, I can set up my own computer, have all my own crap spread out on the desk and it's wonderful. Bonus! Name a book coming out soon. I don't know, as I said, I live in a cave, so when I hear of a book coming out soon, I'm like, oh, that sounds amazing. Add it to my Goodreads list. And then 
immediately forget about it until like two or three years later when um, everybody has a copy and then I'm like, oh hey, that book sounds great. I'll add it to my Goodreads list. And it's already there because past me was smarter than present me. And that was the stay at home book tag. I hope that everybody is staying safe. Everybody's still not gone too stir crazy with the quarantine, but it's all for our own good. Thank you for watching this video. I don't know what will come next, but I'm sure it's going to be great. And until that time, I will speak to you in the comments. Oh, it's so nice to just be able to go.